In today's video, we're going to take these foam pieces that we made on the CNC machine and we're going to make belt buckles out of them. And not just any belt buckles, they're going to be Legend of Zelda belt buckles and fire department belt buckles. This funny looking tower that you see me and my son building here, we call it a tree. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to take all the belt buckles that we're attempting to cast and we're going to glue them to the center screw and then cover them in this plaster stuff. And then while we're out in the yard, we're going to grab ourselves a bucket and we're going to put it in the bucket. <laughs> well, there's more to it than just putting it in the bucket, of course. We're actually going to bury this in dry, clean sand. Now, we got to make sure that there's no organic stuff in there or we're going to have a few little problems or water. More specifically, we could have explosions. But we're not worried about that today because we know that we have good dry sand. Now, in some of my other videos, you've seen me use the vibrator or the recip saw to vibrate it to pack it all down. And in this video here, <laughs> we're going to go simple. We're going to go medieval on this and we're going to beat it with a stick. And it actually turns out beating it with a stick worked really, really well. For this small part, it compacted the sand down enough that it would hold its structure when I pour the metal in. But we'll get more to that in a bit. Now, after a short venture into the house, I'm pretty sure you guys know what I'm having for supper tonight. That's right, it's past tonight. I needed a can. Now, the purpose of the can, as I've said before, is to be the catch basin so that when I pour the aluminum in here, it's going to fill it up. And also speaking of aluminum, big shout out to my buddy Dean who lives down the road. He's a heavy duty diesel mechanic and he pitched in quite a bit for the scrap aluminum for these projects and I really appreciate it. It's kind of keeping all this stuff really going because I was actually running pretty darn low on all this. And probably in the future, we're going to have to make a video on how to take massively large aluminum pieces and break them down into smaller pieces so that they'll fit in the crucible, but that's totally for another day. So we're going to skip ahead here <laughs> with a little bit of magic and uh, right after I fish that part out of there. And we're going to get to the best part of the whole video it's the pouring. And this one here, spoiler alert, goes really, really well. If you're brand new to casting, and I haven't said this before, remember casting is very, very dangerous. And if you're gonna try it, you gotta do your research. But let's get down to the pouring. Now, as I've said before in a lot of my other casting videos, this cup has to stay full once you start pouring. Even if you overflow onto the sand, it's totally okay. It's not a big deal. But if at any point that cup runs dry, that sand's just gonna collapse on itself and you'll have a failed mole. <laughs> Speaking of health and safety, OSHA's got nothing on me. <laughs> um, yeah, it probably isn't one of my smarter moves, but well, that's okay. I'm gonna do it anyways. One of the things that I have learned is, is actually to take this off before it solidifies because it's going to save me a lot of problems down the road. And then another cool little thing is, and I'm not actually just, I'm not playing here. I'm actually, this serves a purpose, what I'm doing, is I'm going to push all this aluminum around while it's wet so that it breaks it up into small pieces. Now, let's pour this out and see what we got. I would say that turned out pretty darn good. Let's take a closer look at it here, clean it up a little bit, and then see what we really have. Now, if I haven't said this before, I just use woodworking tools to cut my aluminum. It's probably a little harder on the blades, but it works all the same in the end. One of the trickiest parts of this whole thing when I was cutting it apart is making sure I didn't cut off the pin for the belt and some of the more finer details on it. So if I haven't mentioned this earlier, the whole purpose of all of this casting out of aluminum is actually just a practice phase to cast stuff out of bronze and brass. I've had a lot of problems with casting the trees with the higher temperatures of bronze. And this is just a good way to figure out if it's going to flow with aluminum first, and then I can move on to bronze or brass. There'll be videos later for that that I'll make sure that you guys get to see. But for now, I'm pretty sure the boys are going to be pretty darn stoked with their Legend of Zelda belt buckles and let's take a closer look at them. And hey, remember, if you like this video here, check out some of my other videos. I know you're going to like them just as much as this one. And we'll catch you on the next one and stay safe out there.